Uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies. Freedomsphoenix.com I'm Alriana van der Spey. I have been at the Center of Criminology for about 12 years, but my interest in police goes back to the 1980s. The laws at the time prohibited um, research on the police as on prisons. Mostly on the left side of the political spectrum, we understood the police you know, as a rather vicious instrument of the apartheid state. And so the question became with negotiations and the change as to what kind of policing institution South Africans wanted. And in figuring that out, I think we drew quite extensively on what international debates looked like. So we looked to the Americans, to the Brits and to some Europeans. Um, and we had at the time quite a lot of advisors advising us with good intentions about what modern, professional and democratic policing looked like. What one needs to understand is that the whole issue of accountability was of course very central. And the notion that the police had to primarily focus on the interests, safety interests, not of the state, but of citizens. So I think the apartheid past allowed us to rethink a policing system that was the opposite. The focus on community policing became you know, a very important theme because the notion of community-based accountability was very appealing. We thought we had it all figured out, foolproof. Viva, here comes democratic policing. Only to then discover that things didn't quite pan out as initially anticipated. So we are at a very interesting phase where a lot of us who were involved in policy deliberations are now looking back, trying to figure out at what strategic points were decisions made uh, without enough of an understanding of how a relatively well-developed bureaucracy may sabotage, resist, undermine, or accommodate policy um, templates. At this point in time, of course, you, you know we're having this conversation in the in the wake of the Maracana um, massacre, where we have you know two commissions of in inquiry, one in the Western Cape, one elsewhere in the country, trying to come to grips with of some of the very difficult challenges. And increasingly it seems to me that there is consensus around some of the institutional um, challenges. A lot of those relate to a rapid expansion of police numbers in a very short space of time with all the consequent negative impacts relating to quality of training uh, monitoring in the field by supervisors, the extent to which the police budget has been kind of consumed by personnel costs, uh, the frailty of internal disciplinary systems. So there are a whole range of that, that sort of organizational challenges. I think they're also very um, important political challenges. We have seen a rapid politicization of the police over the last five, six, seven years. The increasing political interference in the operational mandate of the police, who gets appointed into strategic positions, and of course a disarray in kind of intelligence circles also because of political nepotism. We've had for a long time private security institutions, but perhaps in other forms. Um, the democratization of the state has fueled, interestingly enough, also the privatization of security. Um, there is an, sometimes an uneasy coexistence of public and private. In other cases, there is a very intimate connection between what they do and how they do it. In poor communities where the public police has a marginal presence, 
and where the capacity to buy private security doesn't exist, you have other forms of privatization, whether they be vigilantes or street committees. So there's a whole interesting um, proliferation of informal um, agencies of social control. Even if some of us think, you know, that we, for God's sake, we don't need police organizations or law enforcement, I don't think it's going to happen. So if they are going to remain integral components of states, then we probably need to figure out how to tame them, how to prov provide incentives for good conduct. But the, the challenge is, I think, to draw on the lessons of the past, to put some basics, again, in terms of what we as citizens demand. Um, and to seriously engage with those questions. What kind of police institution do we want? What is possible in the 21st century? There's a long tradition of monitoring the police in South Africa. Um, during the 1990s, there were very dense networks of people who called themselves monitors and whose job it was as understood in those political circles, was to document police abuse. You know, like in Egypt and other places, South Africans too have over the last two or three years in particularly um, realized the explosive impact of visual images. So it's kind of interesting, the human being as the sort of, as the instrument to document the use and the abuse of state power. It's a very long tradition of that. And what we've now seen, I think, through these tools is that everybody can become potentially a monitor.